Hey guys, it's Mark with Gables on the Go. You know, if you've ever thought about coming to the Florida Keys or dreamed of living here or coming down here on vacation, I have to assume probably the reason that you do is this beautiful water out behind us right here. Um, just about everybody that comes down here is coming to either get out on that water or be close to it and enjoy it. And today I just wanted to give you some tools that'll help you if you're searching for a home here in the Keys or if you're searching for a vacation rental here in the Keys and you intend to do some boating. Uh, you intend to be on the water, bring a boat with you, rent a boat when you're down here or anything like that. And I wanna give you some real helpful tools that I used over the years when I used to come down here, drag my boat all the way from Atlanta, north of Atlanta, all the way down here to the Keys and to uh, spend my summers down here going fishing in the Keys and some tools that I would use to research the places that I was going to stay, uh, whether or not it would accommodate my boat, whether or not the uh, water around it was deep enough and the access was what I wanted. I'm going to use Google Maps. You'll be surprised at the things you can do on there that will really help you with your search for a home, either vacation or buying down here in the Florida Keys. So come along with me. Let's go inside. We're going to get on the computer and I'll show you show you some tips so um, i've got google maps open here on my screen so you can see it and i'm actually zoomed in on marathon right here and but you can see the whole florida keys and there's key largo there's key west all the way down i'm going to concentrate and use most of my examples from marathon that way um, just because i'm most familiar with the marathon area and uh, we'll look at some things here all right, so one of the things first and foremost that I always looked at, being that I was going to be on the water for sure, uh, and I was going to have my boat down here, is I needed to know areas of the Keys that uh, were going to be good for me to stay on vacation. Uh, and if you're a home buyer, these things probably will, will be very useful to you the same way. But I would go to satellite view. So down here in the bottom left-hand corner, you can click on satellite view. And I would use the satellite view and the map view interchangeably uh, depending on what it is I was wanting to look for. So let's just look at Marathon as an example right here. And one of the things that you can notice uh, on, on the image right off the bat is you can see where the major cuts through the islands are. So if you look down along A1A running down through here, you can look very quickly and see where your passage from the Gulf side, which is over here, to the Atlantic side, which is over here, you can look very quickly and say, well, if I'm staying down here in this area or up here in this area, where is it that I can take my boat from the Gulf side over to the Atlantic side? And if you just take a quick glance at this image right here, one thing should jump out at you real quick. And this is this right here. And I'm going to zoom in so you can see it. That's called Vaca Cut here in Marathon, and it is the passage through the islands here. It's the only passage through the islands from all the way up here around Duck Key to all the way down here to the Seven Mile Bridge. And that's important to note if you're staying here, because if you're looking at a vacation rental here or you're looking for a home to buy here, one of the questions that might come up is, well, what, how long is it going to take me to get from my house on the Gulf side out to fishing out here out on the reef or out on the atlantic side well there's an easy way for you to do that in google maps and it's using a measure tool so let's just zoom in right around here i'm just going to arbitrarily pick something let's say this is your little place right here and you want to know how long is it going to take you to get from that spot out to the atlantic ocean so that you can go fishing on the atlantic side well if you right click and you go down to measure distance, it'll drop a pin on the map right where you were. You can move it around a little bit so your boat's parked right there at that dock. And now you want to figure out how far it is. So just start clicking. You're going to run down along here. I'll zoom out some so I can see better. Down along here. And you've got to come through this cut here and out out into the atlantic on this side so if you look down here at the bottom total distance is 3.23 miles and one thing that you want to be you know aware of is is this an idle zone can i run can i go full speed well there's often things in the images that'll tip you off to things like that if you don't know it now i just happen to know because i know the water around marathon very well 
Um, I know that this is not an idle zone that you can run uh, full plane out here in this water. Uh, some areas are shallow. You can see around these rocks and things along here. You have That's just stuff that you have to kind of learn. But you can look at this image and see, well, here's a boat obviously on plane right there. There's another one on plane in the image. And obviously not every Google image that you you get is going to you know have stuff like in that like that to tip you off but you know you can take a look around in there and look at stuff like that and start to draw clues as to whether or not that area is an idle zone or it's not so this is telling me it's 3.23 miles from that house around underneath the sunset um, or the uh, seven mile bridge right here right off the of sunset grill and then you know run out to the reef from there so just to get from there to there 3.23 miles and you can kind of do some simple math and figure out you know how long should that take you all right so i'm going to clear that one out you could do the same thing back around to vodka cut and and go through there but i'm not going to go through all that i think you guys get the idea with that now let's look at some things uh that may not be so obvious so for an example, I'm going to go into this area. This is the Sombrero Beach area right here. And you've got all these canals up in here. All right. And to find your way around, let's suppose that you were buying or renting a house somewhere. Oh, let's say that house there as an example. And I'm not using any specific one, guys. I'm just kind of grabbing things as I see it. So you would want to route your course out of here. And if you notice one thing right off the bat that I don't see anywhere in here, I can see this boat right here. Well, if you do any boating at all, you probably know that boat's just above idle or right at idle right there. You can tell by the trail left in the water, he's idling. If you look back through here, you don't see any boats on plane out here at all. Moving around this little boat coming out here looks like He's not on plane right there. So it's pretty safe for you to assume. And again, guys, all this that I'm showing you is just, just assumptions, just a tip to help you kind of search a little bit. You're gonna wanna verify anything and everything that I show you in this video. You're gonna wanna verify that for yourself and get local information uh, as to whether or not, you know, what you saw here in the video is actually going to hold up against what actually is, is happening in real life. These are just general tips to help you. So if you look here, let's say you're staying at this house over here, you right click, measure distance, and you draw you a trail out of the area, best you can tell, down here, out the canal, and you come out here to where you start to see some open water. So, and I will tell you, if you happen to be in this area, stay over here, don't go over there, <laughs> it's shallow. And again, you can look and I'm gonna show you some things you wanna pay attention to. So now you're out here in the channel, you can see this boat's on plane. So let's just take it out to that far, assuming that you could start running about right there and you can actually start running back in here. But we're at 1.27 miles right there, all right? But you've got an idle all the way out of here. Well, you know, boats idle probably around two and a half three miles per hour so you could whoops so you could do some simple math and figure out how long is it going to take you by idle to get out of this neighborhood and out to the atlantic ocean on this side using you know idle speed of about two and a half to three miles per hour and that's going to give you a pretty good idea of how accessible the area that you're staying in is going to be to whatever it is that you want to do all right, while we're on that topic of, I said, stay left over there, let me show you something that I look at very closely. And this may or may not be something you've ever paid attention to before. But I want you to look at the color of the water through here and notice something very specific here. See these white streaks? All right, for you guys that are maybe not very experienced boaters, if you look, you can see these straight lines on the bottom here. Those are prop marks. That's where a boat has run through the seagrass or the bottom in those areas. Look at that, all the way down along there. If you see that on Google Images, on these maps like this, here's something you ought to know right now. Their motors hit the, water, hit the bottom right there. That's shallow water all the way over there, very shallow water. If you look at this shoal right here on the edge of this channel, 
you can see very distinct straight marks in there. You know that that's going to be a shallow area that you're going to want to avoid. And you can pan back out and kind of look and see, well, here's your channel right here, even if you don't know where that channel is. And if you look really good, this was a good image on Google Maps. You can actually see the channel markers in the water out here. You can see the shadow off of that one right there. See it? That's your channel marker coming into here. And you can see markers right there, right up here, marking these shoals along the side of that channel. So these are things to pay attention to if you're a kind of a new boater down here and you want to do some research in Google, Google Maps prior to getting down here and getting your boat out on the water. Those are some things that might help you. You can look at other areas of the maps. Look at this area right here. It's kind of interesting. So you see these big long cuts out through here. Now, I can tell you, based on being down here in the Keys as long as I have, um, this is still going to be shallow water. But they have probably at one time or another run a dredge out, out these lines right here to wash this out so that people along this edge right here can get their boats out to deeper water. And if you look all around it, you can see very quickly if you get outside of that area, this, this is not very wide right here. If you get outside of that area and veer outside that channel, you're going to be running up in, you know, a foot of water over here. You're liable to tear the, tear the prop up on your boat, tear your foot off. So down here in the Keys, you really, really want to do a little homework before you bring your boat down here and just start running all around down here uh, and pay attention to these kind of things. Print you off a Google map from here draw you some things on it so that you can kind of tell where it is you're going to go. If you look along this bank right here, you can very clearly see where they dredged along the edge right here to get people around this edge out here and places that you have to be cautious of. If you were living up, if you were staying up on this uh, canal right here, you know, if you turn left out of there and you try to come through this area, you can see prop marks through there. You would want to know to avoid this area right here and figure how you're going to get down this bank chances are you're going to want to run out, come out to deep water out here and run back in Baca Cut to get back up here and not try to cut down this bank. So hopefully those, those are a couple little tips right off the bat that will help you out. If you look, this is a especially notorious shoal out here. This is called the Jack Tar Flats here in Marathon. Vaca Cut Channel runs all along it and you can see the boats in there running. So you know you can run on plane in Vaca Cut until you get up there's a marker right in here that will uh, tell you to start idling once you get up here next to the bridge but if you look closely right in here look at all these prop marks right in here this is a particularly dangerous area right here right off vaca cut this water out here is deep but if you veer over here too much you can see there are prop marks all over the bottom right there and you're going to want to be real careful with that kind of stuff down here in the Keys for sure. Look at the prop marks all along the edge here. This is a real popular area for people to pull their boats up and get out on the sandbar right there. It's kind of a big mushy flat out there, not really a sandbar. But you can see, unfortunately, and I hate to see this, um, people putting these prop marks in the bottom. Guys, those things don't go away for a long time, and that's just tearing up sea bottom and growth. And I really wish... For everybody, you know, when you come down here to the Keys, um, take a look at some of that kind of stuff before you come and you get your boat out here. It's, it's helpful. All right, so let's look at a couple of other things. All right, specific questions on dock lifts and, or uh, boat lifts and docks and access by water and, you know, renting a place or buying a place where you have uh, a boat lift or a dock. Let's zoom in here. This is Key Colony Beach. So there's a couple of things that are useful that I find on Google Maps to start to determine some things. Again, these are not necessarily um, the you know specific answers about specific properties. Every property is different, and you're going to want to check this stuff. But I get the question a lot. You know, we want to buy a house down there in the Keys. Uh, I want something on the water. I want something with a seawall, and I intend on putting a uh, dock or a boat lift in there. Can I do that? And the answer to that question is is always well, it depends on the property, but there are some things that you can do your homework on ahead of time that will help you know. So I'm looking at this one canal right here as an example. And the first thing, the question I might ask is, can I have a boat lift? Well, if you look, you can see boat lifts all the way down this 
canal right here. Some boats are just parked on the side, but you can see a lift right there. All the way down, you can look. Now, again, chances are, if you're seeing boat lifts down along the edge like that, chances are you probably have a shot at putting a boat lift in at the place that you're considering at if you're, if you're looking to buy. Um, you do want to make sure you check and verify that on that particular property. property. All right, here's another little uh, using that measure tool and trying to get a feel for how big the canals are. If you just right click, click measure distance, and go from one edge to the other, I can see that that's, you know, 97.3 feet right there. And this is fairly accurate, guys. I find Google Maps to be uh, fairly accurate with this. So uh, you can use this tool to start to kind of get some basic dimensions in your mind as to how big of a canal you need for the boat that you want to have there. And I'll give you an example. Here's one that I just happen to know right off the top of my head. It's a place that I stayed um, for many years in a row. I used to rent uh, this little house right here. Has a boat lift right there. This canal, if I measure from that side to that side, that canal is about, about 60 feet wide. And I just happen to know that boat and that boat in particular. And I know that these boats, because I've seen them a bunch, are roughly 30 to 32 foot boats. So if I click measure and I click the end of that boat, 30.95 feet. This one should be about the same. I'll drag it out to the tip of that boat and move it to the tip of this boat. 30.79 feet and I'm right in order there so i can see i know that this is actually a pretty uh accurate measuring tool and i'm sure that could fluctuate depending on the image image that you have in google maps but again it's just a little tool that i use to make sure you know well if, if i want to rent that house and i found it on zillow or wherever you guys look for you know places down here well how how big is the seawall at this guy's place here well zoom in Looks like he's roughly got somewhere around 65, 70 feet of seawall right there. And by the way, that's no longer a rental house, guys, so don't look that one up. We used to love that house, but I heard it got sold, and it's, it's not a rental house as far as I know anymore. All right, so maybe there's a couple of tips that will help you out. Let me talk about getting in and out of areas and bridges. I'm going to give you an example. Look at, look at this. I'm going to go down to Big Pine. There is a neighborhood in Big Pine that this comes up quite frequently. So this neighborhood in Big Pine is called Eden Pines right here. And it looks like there are canals all up in here, and there are. If you look, you got canals up in there. I can see boats all up in this area. And I can say, wow, this would be a cool place uh, to own a home. Looks like it's got great access out to the Pine Channel out here. I could get back in the back country off Big Pine. I could come out here to the Atlantic Ocean. I'm liking it. I'm liking Eden Pines a lot. All right, so let's zoom in here and look at some things we want to know about. Do you notice anything that might concern you about living in this area if you're a boater? If you're not spotting it right off the bat, look right there and look right there. Let's zoom in. I can see that there is a bridge on Watson Boulevard in Eden Pines and I can look here and I can't find any other outlet around that bridge. That means you're gonna have to take your boat if you live up here, you're gonna have to take your boat through that bridge right there. There's another one and you got this whole section over here. Couple notes of interest that you can look at right off the bat. Look at the boats that are sitting in the canal above this bridge. So this is the direction you would go down to the water, down to the ocean. Look at the boats that are sitting here. Well, how big is that boat? Let's look. That's a 22 footer. That's a 24, 25, maybe 26 footer, somewhere in that range. And you start looking down through here and you see, look, here's a larger boat. Now I have to assume this bridge is probably high enough for boats of that size to get out of, otherwise it wouldn't be sitting there. <laughs> so pretty simple stuff. Now, if you look over in this neighborhood, 
or this section of the neighborhood. Look at the difference over here. Look at the boats in the water. Now there's a longer boat. I can see that boat's got triple motors on it right there. That looks like a pretty big boat. That must mean this bridge, that boat must be able to fit out through there. But I'm not seeing a lot of big boats in here. I'm seeing a lot of bimini tops on boats, not a lot of T-tops on boats. No tops on these boats. Skiffs right here. So here's something I can tell you that I know about this area. This bridge right here is much closer to the water than this bridge right here is. Uh, this bridge, and I don't, this is not a specific, don't quote me on this guys, but this bridge is somewhere around 11 or 12 feet off the water. This bridge over here, I hear, is somewhere around seven to nine feet off the water. So everybody that lives on this side of this bridge has to know that if you buy a home or you rent a home up in here, you're going to be confined by the height of that bridge. You're going to want to check that out. Well, how in the world do you check that out? Well, if you don't know about Street View in Google Maps, if you go down here to the bottom right-hand corner of the screen and you grab this little orange man right here and you drag him out, Anywhere that you see a blue line, that means that you can drop him in his circle right there. And he's hiccuping on me. Come on. Get out there, little guy. It'll go down to street view, and you can pan around. And now I can get a better look at that bridge. And I can spin all the way around on this bridge right here and take a look and say, hmm, here's interesting. There's a big boat with a T-top on it right there. But back behind it, I notice I've got bimini tops that are re removable. You can let those down, skiffs. There's a boat up there I can't really tell, kind of looks like a bimini top on it. And I'm starting to assume from this picture that everything down that way, I'm gonna be good as long as I don't have to go underneath that bridge. Everything up this way probably is going to be a little bit different story. All right. So hopefully that helps you a little bit with uh, checking out bridges and things like that that you should need to know. Okay. Here's another thing I want to talk to you about on listings that you see online, uh, whether it's a rental listing or whether it's a home for sale that you're interested in, you're going to see things called swimming canals. And um, you might say, well, what is a swimming canal? Sometimes they call it a plug canal. Sometimes they call it a swimming canal. So if you look at these canals in this neighborhood here, you can see they look clear. They go out to a very clear dredge line. Everything, you can tell the watercolor is about the same in all of these. And these are obviously boating canals. But if you look right here in this neighborhood, you notice the color difference between this canal and these canals. There's something going on right here between the water here and the water there. Well, the answer is right here on the end. See those trees and mangroves right in there? These canals have been plugged, and that has to do with the way these canals drain and the way this was designed um, when they put in these neighborhoods, and they, they did not want these canals for whatever reason, and I, I don't know exactly all the reasons on that, guys, but they didn't want these canals to be passable by boats. And if you look up that canal, you don't see any boats up here, up here, up here. So as you're looking for, home, <clears throat> looking for homes in these areas and you know you want to have boating access, well, you might find some great prices on these homes. You might find some great rental rates on this kind of stuff. But your boating access is not going to happen up in here. And these are things that you can find out very quickly if you have an address and you're looking for a place you can check out some of these things real quick and find out, you know, hey, is this going to work for me or not? So plugged canal or swimming canal, that's what they, they refer to those as. And hopefully, guys, this helps you a little bit. Um, I, I know it's kind of quick I went through this, but I know it's a, it's a long video and a lot of information. But hopefully it gives you some ideas about things here in the Keys. Um, renting or owning a home here in the Keys. And if you have any questions about a specific property here in the Keys, I'll be glad to help you with that. All of my information is in the description below the video. You can get in touch with me and I can help you with a specific property here on answering questions about boating uh, specific. I am a U.S. Coast Guard licensed uh, captain 
and uh, and of course I am a real estate agent as well and I'm very familiar with the water around Marathon so I'd be glad to help you with that if boating is one of your primary reasons for uh, searching for a home here in the Florida Keys I am uh, able to help you with that and be glad to just make sure you give me a call Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed that video. I hope you found it useful in some way and I really appreciate you watching the channel uh, Yes, Laurie's gonna be on another video very soon here. We've both been super busy and She's uh, her school year is going right now and uh, you guys know teachers are really jumping through some hoops right now uh, with all the COVID stuff so she's been super busy and we just have not been out on the boat or had time to do much of anything lately but we'll get Laurie back on a video very soon so anyway I hope you found this video uh, useful for you and I really appreciate you guys watching and you guys catch us next time on Gables on the Go see you